Does flashing your RX 9070 with the 9070 XT BIOS really boost your performance by 25%? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the True or False series, I help you avoid the hype and misinformation by showing you the truth from a source you can trust. In a recent post on Overclock.net, experienced user Benic3 published a modified version of the well-known AMD VB flash tool, which Acer recently released as part of a BIOS update for its RDNA4 cards. This software now allows AMD RDNA4 owners to flash a different BIOS onto their cards. Flashing the BIOS of a higher end GPU onto a less powerful SKU from the same GPU family is not a novel concept. And given how similar the RX 9070 is to the 9070 XT, it's an obvious GPU to target. In fact, Tech Power Up and Tom's Hardware both recently ran articles claiming that there was a huge 25% boost in performance if you do. But is it true? And perhaps more importantly, is it worth the risk? Let's find out. Flashing a GPU carries significant risks, including bricking the card, which will make it completely unusable, system instability, and voiding your warranty. These issues can occur from power interruptions during the flash process, using an incompatible firmware version for your card, or employing incorrect tools and procedures, which can lead to permanent hardware damage or corruption of the GPU BIOS. With that in mind, I would only recommend attempting to flash your GPU under two conditions. One, if you have a GPU with a dual BIOS switch, this will allow you to continue to use your GPU by switching to the other BIOS in the event that the flashing process does not work. And two, if you can find a vBIOS for a higher end card in the same family of GPUs, this will give you the highest probability of success. That said, no one can guarantee that the flashing process will work for your card. So keep this in mind if you do choose to proceed. With the newly modified AMD VB flash tool, it's now possible to turn an RX 9070 into a 9070 XT without having to resort to using hardware programming tools such as the CH341A. However, use of this software is entirely at your own risk. There is no guarantee that you will be successful. That said, if you do plan to proceed, these are the steps you should take. Step one, back up your existing vBIOS using GPU-Z. On the graphics card tab, click on the small icon with the arrow next to the BIOS version. Click on save to file and save your backup somewhere safe. Step two, download a 9070 XT vBIOS from the Tech Power Up certified video BIOS collection. When you're on the Tech Power Up website, simply type in vBIOS in search and then click on VGA BIOS collection. Under card model, select RX 9070 XT. You can then narrow down the results based on the 9070 brand that you are using. I would recommend trying to flash a BIOS from the same 9070 XT variant that you are using for the 9070. So for the ASUS Prime RX 9070 OC card that I'm using, I would select ASUS from card vendor. This narrows down the verified BIOS list to three options. I would then download the Gaming OC option, which is for a Prime RX 9070 XT OC card. Step three, download the modified AMD VB Flash 5.0.879.0 V1 tool from Benic3 on overclock.net into the same directory as the 9070 XT V BIOS that you just downloaded. I'll provide the link to the tool in the description to this video. Step four, run the tool as an administrator. Right click on the file and run it as an administrator. Starting via the Windows command line, as is usual with early earlier versions is not necessary with this version. It will start directly in an executable window. Step five, flash your GPU with the command shown. The flash must be repeated at least twice in succession. It's recommended that the flash is first carried out without the additional commands dash FV, dash FP, dash FA, if possible. Step six, switch off your PC completely after the BIOS flash. A restart is not sufficient. Ideally, your device should be disconnected from your power supply for at least one minute. Step seven, repeat the flash process as described above twice in succession. Switch the device off after each flash. Since the release of RDNA 3, the BIOS is actually mirrored in the ROM chip. One partition is always active and the second Second is inactive. Unlike a hardware programmer, the flash tool only ever overwrites the active partition, which changes after a reboot. It is therefore essential to carry out the process at least twice. Step eight, check GPU Z to see if the changes have taken effect. Congratulations, your RX 9070 is now a 9070 XT, but without the additional hardware shaders. As you can see for my ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9070 OC card, it now shows much higher clocks and fill rates when compared against the default BIOS. 
To check the performance impact, I ran my comprehensive GPU benchmark suite, which includes 19 games together with multiple synthetic and professional workloads. For the game benchmarks, I decided to add in my Red Devil RX 9070 XT as well, to see just how close a BIOS modified 9070 could get to matching that card. The test system I used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. For the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Royal Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 8000 at CL38. For the GPU-1, we have an ASUS Prime Radeon RX 9070OC. For GPU-2, we have a PowerColor Red Devil Radeon RX 9070XT. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX 1200i Platinum 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All benchmark testing was performed with the GPUs at their default clocks. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to the 9800X3D, which can be found in my What are the best settings for an AMD Ryzen CPU video. In order to thoroughly test the GPUs, I ran the benchmarks at ultra graphic settings. I test GPUs at ultra settings because this places maximum load on each GPU, which is the best way to compare relative performance. In addition, I decided against using frame generation for the benchmarks to avoid any biasing of the results. I did however use upscaling, but only when it was automatically selected as part of the standard graphics options, which when used is clearly denoted on the charts. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As you can see from the average benchmark results, the increase in performance for the RX 9070 is around 5% at both 1440p and 4K. In fact, even the 9070 XT was only able to beat the baseline 9070 by around 12%. Given this, how would flashing a 9070 with a 9070 XT BIOS increase performance above a 9070 XT? It just doesn't make sense. If you now look at the 3 d Mark synthetic GPU benchmarks for Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad, the increase in performance is still only around 6%. Furthermore, if you look at professional workloads, the performance increase varies from around 2 to 9%, again well short of the reported 25% boost. One thing that is however clear is that to achieve this relatively small boost in performance, the power went up significantly, which in turn reduced the efficiency of the card. 
It's not all bad news, however, since flashing the BIOS costs nothing, there was an increase in value as expected. Perhaps the performance gets better when you try tuning and optimizing the cards. To manually tune my RX 9070, I use the custom option in Adrenaline under tuning presets, which gives you full tuning control. To learn how to dial in an optimum overclock for an AMD Radeon GPU, you can follow the steps I outline in my How to Undervolt an Overclock a Radeon RX 9070 XT video. For my ASUS Prime RX 9070 OC, I was able to decrease the voltage offset by 110 millivolts and increase the memory clock by 312 megahertz, which is excellent. I did the exact same thing with the 9070 XT BIOS installed, however, I had to dial back the power slider. Due to the significant expansion in baseline power limits with the 9070 XT BIOS installed, I found that increasing the power slider to only 2% resulted in the best performance. Given that it's the exact same card, the optimum VRAM boost and undervolt remained exactly the same. To see what impact these overclocks have on performance, I reran 3 d Mark Speedway, Port Royal and Steel Nomad. As you can see from the results, the performance increase for the baseline 9070 was excellent, with an average increase of around 12%. However, the performance increase for the BIOS modified card was only around 6%, which is perhaps not surprising given the large increase in performance at stock conditions. What's truly fascinating is that by properly undervolting and overclocking the baseline 9070, you're able to come very close to the performance of an overclocked 9070 with a 9070 XT BIOS, but at a significantly lower power draw. In fact, in Speedway, the overclocked 9070 is able to beat the overclocked BIOS modified 9070. But what about games? Starting with Total War Warhammer 3, it's clear that the performance increase is similar to the 3D Mark results, with the BIOS modified 9070 only able to generate an extra 1% of average FPS when compared with an overclocked 9070. In fact, with the exception of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, which shows a large 10% improvement in performance, both Cyberpunk 2077 and Call of Duty Black Ops 6 show a net decrease in performance when the two cards are overclocked, which is obviously not a good result when you consider the risks associated with flashing your GPU. So does flashing a Radeon RX 9070 with a 9070 XT BIOS really boost your performance by 25%? Based on the data presented in this video, the answer is a definitive no. In fact, as stated earlier, it's not even logical to expect that flashing a 9070 with a 9070 XT BIOS will increase performance above that of a baseline 9070 XT. Given that the source of the performance claims was a post on Reddit, it's not really surprising that it was garbage. What is however surprising is that tech power up, Tom's hardware and video cards all decided to spread this nonsense without doing any independent checks or verification on the claims. This isn't the first time that they've been caught spreading misinformation, with some of their recent articles pushing debunked videos from Jay's Two Cents and Hardware Unboxed. In fact, video cards recently claimed that they didn't spread the rumor that Nvidia Super Series cards were being released in 2025, when in fact they did. It's obviously not acceptable for tech media outlets to lie and spread misinformation, and those doing it need to be held accountable. But how do we do that? The easiest way is to publicly call them out on social media forums and Reddit. They need to understand that their actions have consequences. If tech outlets constantly spread misinformation and lie, then don't watch or read their content. It's as simple as that. Imagine the many RX 9070 owners who read these lies and bricked their cards as a result, chasing a mythical 25% boost. Shame on you, tech power up, Tom's hardware and video cards. You all need to do much better. So what should you do if you own a 9070 or are planning to buy one now that prices are coming down? Given the relatively low performance gain shown in this video and the profound risks associated with flashing your GPU, I would highly recommend simply tuning and optimizing your card instead. This will get you better performance with lower power and temps without running the risk of destroying your card. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching the next video in the Blackbird PC Tech True or False series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as I attempt to guide you on your PC Tech journey. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, such as live Q&A sessions, please also consider joining our new school community. Bye for now.